you guys welcome back to my channel i am so excited for today's video it's one that i get excited to film every single year and today we are going to be recapping all of the makeup products that i emptied out and used up in the year of 2023 i will be doing this overhead style so i just popped on for a quick introduction i did have my best year of empties ever which makes me so happy because the year of 2022 i just feel like was not a good makeup use year for me i feel like i was like questioning whether or not i even really loved makeup anymore in 2022 in 2023 i just feel like re-sparked and reignited my love for makeup and my empties showed it so i actually ended up finishing up prior to this i think my best makeup empties year was either 104 or 108 empties i ended up completing 113 makeup products this year obviously that was not all brand new products that I was finishing from start to finish. I've had like a very large makeup collection for six or seven years at this point in time, maybe even more. So some of the products are extremely old in my collection and were really close to being finished. And I also feel like I have a really good system for like how I try to like work through my products. Like I really do. There's so many lip products in my collection that were so close to being done. So I really tried to heavily focus on those. I don't want anyone out there to think it's like normal to finish 113 makeup products, especially like brand new. They were not. And the other thing I will point out is mascaras, which I haven't quite um, counted up how many mascaras were empties. If a mascara has reached the four month mark, no matter if it's empty or not, I count it as an empty. That is the one product that I'm like, okay, if I've consistently used it the last four months, but it's not empty, I'm still not going to be using it because it's so close to the eye. I'm sorry. There's like a plane going by. It's so loud. Um, because I put it directly on my eyes, I don't want to end up with an eye infection or anything like that. And I do count those products as empties. Now, if I'm really close to finishing up like a lip product, say I have like a fourth of a lip product left and maybe it, it expired, that is not a product that I would count as an empty, but mascara is the one exception. And I'm also someone who really does like to cocktail my mascaras. So I usually have three or four mascaras open at a time. So that is like a chunk of my makeup empties and that just like is what it is that's how i do things if that bothers you i think it's really weird that like you get bothered by how other people count their makeup empties um but i guess to each their own however you want to count your empties go for it but just throwing that out there as a little caveat and then also just wanted to say like it's not like these were 113 brand new makeup products but i'm very excited to share all of them with you guys i will also be posting a video sometime in january where i do like a reflection on 2023 talk to you kind of about like what i learned from my makeup rehab series and then also chat through my makeup empties versus how many makeup products i purchased and brought into my collection throughout each makeup category so kind of comparing how many foundations did i buy versus how many foundations did i empty and just like chatting through like the data of that i love data i love statistics so keep an eye out for that if that's something that interests you other than that i'm very excited to get into the empties so if you're interested stay tuned first if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content palette themed content or just chit chatting about makeup i'd love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on and other than that let's jump into the video Okay, you guys, all of my makeup empties are spread out across my desk. And I think it's always fun to reflect back on your empties because I look at some of these things and I'm like, wow, I thought I finished that literally years ago. And in reality, I did not finish it as long ago as I thought. So it's really fun for me, especially to have my lip glosses laid out. I knew I had finished up a lot of lip products this year, but to actually see this like row of so many lip products makes me so happy. I had lip product on my 
on my lips at all time this year. <laughs> but we're gonna go through each category in no particular order other than like what is literally like in the view frame right now. So we'll start with mascara. I know I mentioned in the introduction that no matter what, no matter where the mascara is at, I do call it at four months and I call it an empty. So I was really trying to get through my mascaras this year. I was on a mascara no buy and I believe I only ended up purchasing one mascara, which was the Tower 28 mascara. So I have these little minis and these actually like take like in a month, these are dried out because they are so small. It's the Chanel number, it's the Chanel Le Volume Revolution, and then also just the, oh, the Gucci mascara as well. Um, these are fine. I would say, I don't even know, like, what my actual favorite mascara is. Oh, obviously it's the Ilia Limit La Limitless Lash, duh. But aside from that, like, I actually don't think... I'm too picky with mascara because I always am cocktailing my mascaras and wearing multiples at a time. So if it doesn't transfer, I make it work. I believe there's 16 total mascaras in here that are empties. I also have the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I have the Lancome Idole Mascara. I have this little mini or deluxe size from... Dose, it's the Max Lash Volumizing Mascara. I have one of my Ilia Limitless. This was a smaller, um, it like wasn't their mini, even smaller than that. I'm sure I got this free gift with purchase somehow, some way. I have this one from Blink. This was a terrible mascara. This literally did nothing. Like I don't understand how this is even like a product that I don't know if you can still get this, but the fact that it was ever available for purchase, I don't get it. It says it's a tubing mascara, but like it literally did nothing for the lashes. I also have this one from Ilia. It is the other mascara that they have. I don't know what this one's called. I prefer the Limitless, but I still think this one is a good one as well. Ilia makes a good mascara. I also have this one from Urban Decay. It's the Lash Freak. I don't believe that you can get this anymore. I do still have one of these in my collection. I actually really do like this. It's quite a finicky mascara, but once you like learn how to use it, I feel like it makes a big impact in the lashes. So I actually really like that one. I have this one from City Beauty, the Beyond Mascara. I liked this, but this is a rather expensive mascara. So I don't see myself purchasing that in the future. I also have this one from MAC, which I did enjoy. I don't even know what this one is called. Historically, I've been a huge MAC mascara fan. We'll see how much more I can get through my mascara collection this year. Like, it'll be interesting when I actually start, like, if I actually start buying mascaras, like, what mascaras am I going to buy? I always just get free gift with purchase mascaras and just use those. Um, this is from, another one from Chanel, the La Base Mascara. This was, a, oh, yeah, um... A mascara primer then I have this one from NARS this is the climax extreme I actually wasn't a huge fan of that one and then finally I have this one from milk makeup it's the Kush mascara I've gone through many Kush mascaras in my lifetime and I actually do like this formula I really like the waterproof formula so maybe one day I'll buy more milk Kush mascaras all right I'm gonna roll over my brow category next and I just kind of lumped brows all together I did not realize I'd gone through three of the NYX micro brow, brow pencils this is my favorite micro brow pencil just because you can get it at the drugstore sorry is this are they all NYX yeah they are you can get it at the drugstore it's a really fine tip which I definitely prefer um, I liked to trace my brows with the NYX micro brow and then I kind of liked to fill in with the benefit goof proof which had more of a triangular sort of shape to it um, just because it took less time but this is more expensive and I don't see myself like going out to purchase benefit unless it was like on sale again during the Ulta 21 days of beauty which it probably will be this Rowan pencil, I swear I finished years ago. I actually really liked this. Um, really similar to the NYX in that it had a really fine tip. So for that reason, I would just buy the NYX going forward because it's less expensive. But I finished that up. So that is technically two for five brow pencils. Then I have this brow duo from Undone Beauty. I really like this. It has a tinted brow gel on one side and then it has a brow marker on the other side. I definitely prefer this for the brow, the tinted brow gel. The marker does not like it dries out really quickly. Then I finally finished up my Huda Beauty Bomb Brows tinted brow gel. This went on forever. This is something I would potentially consider purchasing again, but you can get the Undone Beauty for half the price, and I actually prefer 
the Undone Beauty Tinted Brow Gel, so I don't know that I, I actually probably wouldn't repurchase that in the future, but I did like the product. I also finished up a NYX brow glue, which I thought I had finished up a clear version this year as well, but maybe that was last year. And then I also have the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. So basically two brow setting products, two tinted brow products or like tinted fibrous brow gels, and then five total eyebrow pencils for a total of nine brow products emptied this year. Moving on to concealers. Concealers was a strong category for empties this year, but I will say, like this RMS concealer has been in my collection for so long. It already had a huge pan going into this year. And same with these two brow, these two concealers, excuse me. Um, I They were already at least half gone entering the year. So, And then I have my Becca color corrector. I don't currently have a color corrector in my collection, but I would be purchasing but I would be interested in purchasing another one. Probably not this same product just because it's more expensive and it's more emollient. I would like to potentially try the Sigma one because so many people rave about that one, but you don't get that much product in that from what I've heard. Anyway, the concealers I finished up, the Armani Power Fabric. I don't believe you can get this anymore. I am interested in trying the new concealer that Giorgio Armani came out with or Armani Beauty came out with this year, but I have other concealers I wanna get through. Also the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I liked this, but I definitely have other concealers I prefer. I like the Natasha Denona one better if I'm looking for a full coverage concealer. This one was pretty full coverage. Nice concealer, but I don't see myself purchasing that again. And then I also finished up the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This was fine. I didn't mind it, but again, I prefer, like, I like the LYS Concealer. I like the Tower 28 Concealer, so I wouldn't purchase that one again. And then, as I said, I have the RMS Uncover Concealer. Did not like that one <laughs> at all. And then the Becca Color Corrector, which I've gone through multiple jars of this in the past, but I want to try something new. So, five concealer products emptied this year. All right, let's move on to this eye base category next because this is like a lot i will say i was just about done with the milk makeup hydra grip eye primer um and actually i use this kind of a lot underneath my eyes to like hold on to my concealer i thought this was one of the worst products ever i spent most of my year using up the nars smudge proof base and i really enjoyed that this is something i would consider purchasing again but i have other products like this currently in my collection I would want to get through first. The NYX Glitter Primer I finished at the very beginning of this year, purchased another one. My packaging broke on this one, so this went much quicker because of that, but I did finish that this year as well. I just realized I'm not facing this the right way. And then I swear I finished this like last year, but I guess I finished this this year as well. The Smashbox 24 hour photo finish eyeshadow primer. I prefer something with like that's not in a squeeze tube for my eyeshadow primer. So not something I personally would purchase again, but I actually emptied out five eyeshadow bases this year, which typically it takes me like, I, I would say I would go through like a glitter primer and then one eyeshadow base. That's like my typical, just to throw it out there. My sister also gave me this one and it was already like opened and used. So this wasn't completely full, but nevertheless, five eyeshadow bases this year. I just realized I did actually finish 16 mascaras this year. This one had rolled away. Um, okay, we can move on to sprays next. I love to mist my face. We know this. Um, I talk about it all the time. So actually only having um, six mists here is kind of shocking to me, especially because my sister had given me this Mad Love one and it wasn't totally full. Um, but I finished up this one from Mad Love. This was fine. I don't know where you can really get this. Um, so I don't necessarily know that I would purchase that again. I have this one from Rare Beauty. This was fine. Again, I don't know that I would purchase this again. I think the only high end, and actually I will say I will not spend high-end prices for a makeup mist just because I think one I like to mist my face so I kind of overuse it and two I just at the end of the day it's like water in a bottle kind of not really but kind of um but usually you can get like these two I've always gotten on sale during the Ulta 21 days of beauty I do really like the benefit the professional probably even more so than the Urban Decay All Nighter I had this ABH Dewy Set Mist left over from a subscription box. This was fine. It kind of smelled like coconut um, and it did offer 
a pretty glow to the skin, but this isn't something I would ever really seek out. The MAC Fix Plus is my favorite of all time, especially for like mid makeup application. They almost always have this on sale during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty and I always pick up like two at a time. And then I really did enjoy the Revolution Hydrate and Fix Spray um, for a less expensive option that just made my skin feel hydrated. So I would purchase this one again as well. And those are the six empties I had for face mist. Should we go through eyeliners next? Just because there's not like a ton. But I actually do have two Urban Decay eyeliner empties. This was a mini that was almost gone. And then this one I had been working on since last July. Like really aggressively as well these take forever to get through i love the urban decay 24 7 eyeliner formula i think it's really good i currently still have some of my collection in many shades so i have those two i'm really surprised i only have one nyx epic ink liner here this is my favorite liquid liner i swear i finished more than this but you know this makes me happy i use this just about every day that i do my makeup I also have the Kaja Wing Stamp. I love this. I do have another one of these open in my collection. This does really help me. It's like a wing stamp on the go. It helps me get my lines, help me, helps me feel more confident doing my winged liner. And then this product is from Bite Beauty. My sister gave this to me and I wish I could still get this. It is a liquid liner and this I loved even more than the, I just loved the tip. This was the perfect liquid liner i've ever used if you have any dupes to this you can re recommend please let me know i absolutely loved this um and i just wish i could still get this but obviously i can't so i have five eyeliner empties here what should we move on to next let's talk about powders i was hoping to have at least one more powder empty but i just have two here and i feel like i used more than two powders this year but I guess it's just the two so I have the number seven lift and illuminate took me forever to use up these two powders you guys I'm so close to being done with my hourglass powder but it didn't happen so I wasn't gonna waste it just to have it as an empty I really enjoy both of these um but I think as of right now I really do like a baked pressed powder for all over the face I think I will purchase the Kosas one when I get through some of my other powders because I do really kind of miss the Kosas airbrush but two powder empties in 2023. I have four bronzing product empties well three bronzing one contour. I finally finished up my Kevin Aquan sculpting powder. Um, thank goodness this is an empty. I never thought I would see the day but alas it is empty. Um, and then this Tower 28 bronzer I actually ended up using as a body bronzer and really loved it that way fell in love with this product that that way this year i actually ended up using the iconic london liquid bronzer in the same way just to try and repurpose some of my products that i wasn't loving on the face i will purchase the tower 28 bronzer again this year to use it on like my neck and chest i loved it that much kind of gave, gave like a body blur as well and then i did finish up the elf uh forever sun kissed bronzer i have not had a powder bronzer in, since 2021 so this was so exciting that i have a powder bronzer empty i have quite a few bronzers currently in my collection with pans so i'm hoping in 2024 i have at least two powder bronzer empties but we'll see all right we're almost down to lips i have a couple more just like random eye products here um, so I have two eyeshadow singles. I have a ColourPop Super Shock in the shade By the Pound. This took years to finish. And then this was just like a deep potted single shade in like a lid setting shade. But nevertheless, I used it all the way up. Also, my Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in the shade Rose Gold. I finally finished up. This was towards the beginning of this year. But I guess I remember finishing this last year or so, I thought. But... I didn't. And then I also finished up the Stilo Wanderlust Glitter and Glow. So this feels really good for like eye shadow single products. Like this feels really good to have four. I don't know that that's ever happened. I have a face palette, you guys. My first ever face palette empty. This was the RCMA Living Luminizer Quad. I guess I could maybe dig a little bit more, but like we're calling this an empty. I absolutely want to repurchase the Champagne Rosé Living Luminizer Highlighter. Such a beautiful cream highlight. Probably my favorite that I've ever used, but I'm so excited that I actually like literally used all four shades in this and this is an empty. And then this took years. But my Becca 
mini highlight in the shade rose gold no rose quartz finally an empty it feels so sad that like this I actually well, I'm like I feel like I need to keep this little saucer as a memoir <laughs> or as like a memento um but two well one face palette and then one highlighter I don't I've never had a highlighter empty or a face palette empty so that is also very exciting I have two blush products both are liquid blushes the Daniel Sandler watercolor gel cheek color I loved it was such a beautiful shade I had it in the shade nectar I don't know if this is still available and it makes me so sad because I actually loved this product. And then I finally, after years of effort, finished up my Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in the shade Peachgasm. I really enjoyed this, but I don't think I'd purchase it again just because I have so many other cream and liquid blushes in my collection, including Pinkgasm from Charlotte Tilbury. So those two are empties. We're gonna end with lips. So I have just foundations and primers left to talk about. I have two four six eight foundation empties i feel like i've been more successful in years past this actually like, kind of makes me sad like i feel like i could have done better i you guys i swear i finished this like in 2020 but i guess it was this year the rare beauty foundation i finished up i would be interested to purchase this again um in a shade that matches me better i really actually ended up liking this the more consistently that i used it I also finished up the Dior Forever foundation. I've gone through multiple jars of this in the past and I own Dior Forever Glow right now. Love that. I also swear I'm like, I do not remember finishing ColourPop Pretty Fresh this year, but this, I was it wasn't my favorite towards the end. Um, you know, I'm, I love to test and try new foundations, so this is not something I'll go repurchase. I also didn't love the Kosas Revealer foundation. I don't feel like it had a good like wear time or staying powder power. Um, and this took me forever to finish. So I'm excited to see that go. Also the Oma Beauty Stay Woke Foundation. I've been working on this for quite some time. I like this, but I actually prefer the Oma by Sharon C. I don't know if they make that anymore, but I love that foundation. This one I personally will not re repurchase. This is one I may repurchase towards the spring summer. I absolutely loved the Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1. Um, for days that I had, like spring, summer, no makeup, makeup, this was one of my favorite products. So I could see myself purchasing that again. Then I also finished up a little mini Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. This was just like a reward, like coupon code at Sephora. And I'm glad that I tried this again because I've gone through a full size in, this in the past. Didn't love it. Was curious if I would love it nowadays. And I'm glad I tried it again because it's just not a favorite for me personally. I know so many people love that one. It's just not my favorite. And then the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude. I have loved this foundation for years and finally finished it up. Not something I think I'll repurchase just because, again, I like to test and try new things. And, you know, this is something I really liked for a couple years. But I love my Girl On Healthy Glow. Um, I have my NYX dupe to this i forget what it is now nyx glow still to finish up so i won't be repurchasing this i don't even know if this is available anymore but i'm excited that i emptied that this year so eight foundations finished this year that's still really good we have so many primer empties this year and primer is easy for me because i wear it every single time i do my makeup and even if i'm not doing makeup sometimes i still toss a primer on that's how i have so many primer empties i have 10 here so we can start with the minis first i have the mini Ilia true skin radiant priming serum this was just a little mini i've actually gone through a full size of this in the past not something i personally would repurchase but i did enjoy using it I also have a little mini deluxe size of the Bobbi Brown face base. This is something I would consider purchasing again once my primer collection is like really down there. Maybe I only have like one other hydrating primer. This is a really nice hydrating primer, extremely hydrating, and it does offer a bit of a tack to it as well. So I'm glad I got to try this one finally. I have the Tatcha, the liquid canvas, silk canvas, not a favorite of mine, um, wouldn't repurchase. First Aid Beauty Coconut Skin Smoothing Priming Moisturizer, all-time favorite primer, but I'm trying to get away from hydrating primers. I just feel like there's other styles of primers that if I'm using a primer, I, I want. So I don't know if I'll purchase this again, but I've gone through so many of these. So I do love this one and I do recommend, especially if you like a coconut scent, you like something hydrating and you like something a little bit glowy. I think this is beautiful. I have three e.l.f. 
primer empties, which also, did we see that the e.l.f. Jelly Pop primer is available again, if you guys are looking for it. I'm considering buying this one again, because the e.l.f. primers do offer a really good grip to the skin, and that's really one thing I really value in a primer, and I found that this year. I really like a gripping primer. So I have the e.l.f. Power Grip, which wasn't a favorite. The e.l.f. Mint Melts Cooling Face Primer, which I liked, but my favorite is the e.l.f. Jelly Pop, because it does offer a really beautiful dewy glow to the skin and it offers the grip that the others offer. So if I were to purchase an e.l.f. primer again, I, I am considering purchasing that again, but finished those off. I also finished up the Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Glow. I also really like this, but very similar to these e.l.f. primers. So personally, I think just like go for the less expensive option. From Hard Candy, I finished up the Hydrating Primer. This actually does have a good grip to it, and this is something I would consider purchasing again because it's so inexpensive, and it really does offer a good grip to your makeup. Plus, it feels hydrating. And then I finally finished up the RMS Beauty Primer. This is the Re-Evolve Radiance Locking Primer. Really beautiful, glowy primer, very hydrating, but this is way too expensive for what it is. And again, I'm trying to kind of get away from hydrating primers because I can get hydration out of my skincare collection. So those are the 10 primers I finished this year. All right, we'll finish it off with lips. Let's first talk about the two liquid lipsticks I finished. Ofra Burkell, a really beautiful, bright red lipstick would potentially consider purchasing this again but i personally prefer the joseph colors liquid lipstick formula and i also have holy grail is it or is it yeah holy grail from persona so i already have a red liquid lipstick i don't need to go out and repurchase but this was nice and just a very little mini and then i have this one from joseph colors which i've been working on four years in a mob story. I did take the stopper out of both of these. If I could still purchase this shade, I would. This is like my favorite liquid lipstick of all time. But those two are empties. I also have two lipstick empties. So I have the Glow Paradise in the shade Beige Eden from L'Oreal. I definitely would consider purchasing this again. I really like L'Oreal lipsticks. And I like this line because it was more of like a satin glossy sort of finish to the lips. I just, Beige Eden was a really beautiful beigey nude shade which is like a favorite shade of lipstick for me so would definitely consider purchasing that one again and then i finished up a little mini in the tom ford lipstick in the shade indian rose really really beautiful i also enjoyed using this as a cream blush i'm so excited to have two lipstick empties then i have six lip balms here i'm actually surprised it's not more i have so many like half used lip balms literally everywhere i'm from minnesota so it gets so dry and cold here, but I have the Lana Lips 101 ointment. This is so good, you guys. I definitely recommend and will likely own this again. I can get through some other <laughs> lip ointments and lip treatments, lip balms before purchasing again, but I would purchase maybe like a three pack. It is so ultra hydrating on the lips. Love that product. I also really like the Fresh Potted lip balms. This was in Lemon, uh, super hydrating on the lips. Kind of annoying that's it, that it's in pot form, but I do feel like it offers this really nice emollient hydration to the lips. So I like that. I also have this one from Fresh, which this was old, but I think they have now reformulated because I'm currently trying to work my way through a couple other Fresh lip balms, and they're just not as good as they used to be. But I did finish up that many. I also feel like I fly through these Fresh lip balms. The Kosa Sport I've been working on since like 2019 or 2020. So excited to have finally finished that off. Not something I personally would repurchase. I also finished up the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask. Obviously, you can't get this anymore, but if you could, I would purchase this one as well. Such a good hydrating lip treatment. And then from Tatcha, I have the Kisu Lip Mask. I do not think this is a great product. It's like overpriced Vaseline in my opinion, so not something I personally would repurchase either. But those are my six lip balm empties, and then we are going to finish it off with two, four, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 4, 5, 25 lip balms slash lip oils. So we can start with these two. We know how much I love Lawless Forget the Filler. This is in the shade Daisy Pink, which was beautiful. And then a shade from the 
holiday set last year. I own so many Lawless Forget the Fillers. It's one of my absolute favorite lip gloss formulas of all time. So obviously we'll repurchase and continue to repurchase. Then we have two of the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb Minis. Love this formula as well. I own so many shades. I've used up so many of these in the past um, and it continues to be a favorite gloss formula. I have two of the lifter glosses from Maybelline. Love this formula as well. I still own a couple in my collection and will continue to repurchase the lifter gloss as well. There are a couple of shades I wanted to purchase last year during the summertime. And if they are available again this summertime, I will purchase them, but I wanted to get through some of my other older lip products before doing so, but two lifter gloss empties. Couple of Kopari lip glossy empties as well. Another favorite formula of mine. I've gone through so many of these and I still own so many Kopari lip glossies. So we know I love this one. Also love the Tower 28 lip gloss formula, lip jelly formula. I went through the shade Spicy as well as Cashew. Um, these you can fly through. Like these go really, really quickly. I do really like the formula and will continue to repurchase. They have so many beautiful shades, but these go really quick. I have a NARS Lip Lacquer in Santo Domingo. This was sticky, I liked it, but I wouldn't repurchase. I also have a Pat McGrath lipstick in the shale in the shade Pale Fire Nectar. I like this, but I don't ever see myself paying full price for a Pat McGrath lip gloss. I think I, I like my Lawless Forget the Filler or even the Lifter glosses much better. I do really like the Kosas lip oils. I think they're a little bit overpriced for what they are, but I did finish up the shade Dip, and I do still own quite a few shades in the Kosas lip oil formula. I finished up the Persona lip gloss in the shade Peach. Not my favorite formula. I think it's a little bit sticky, um, and it just, the more I used it, the more I was like, ugh, this just really isn't a favorite. The Ofra lip gloss formula is also not a favorite, but I did finish up both that were in my collection in the shades BRB and Pink Panther. I feel like these went really quickly too. Like I feel like once I committed, I went through these really quickly. I have the Bite Beauty lip gloss in the shade Flat White. You can't get any more, but I've gone through two of these. I loved the shade that much. It was a really beautiful, cool beige shade. I have a mini Ilia lip balm. Wasn't a huge fan of this. I actually felt like this made my lips feel more dry, so wouldn't purchase that in a full size. I have this one from Dose of Colors, and I also have the shade Can You Not from Dose of Colors. Wouldn't purchase again. I used to really love the shade Can You Not, but I think the Dose of Colors lip gloss formula is a little bit dated. It's definitely really sticky. These lip glosses, though, you get so much product, and they take four freaking ever to get through. So you definitely get bang for your buck, but not a favorite lip gloss formula for me anymore. Also from Becca, I finished up the Glow Gloss in the shade Malibu Soleil. I do have a couple other Becca glosses still in my collection. These also take a good amount of time to get through. I like the formula. You obviously can't get it anymore though, so... One of the worst lip products of all time, such a pain to finish this, but I forced myself to, is the REM Lip Oil. Hate the applicator, hate the product, so bad in my opinion. I finished up this little Buxom Mini in the shade Amy. I loved this shade and I went on to purchase another Buxom gloss because I love the Buxom gloss formula. Really shiny, sparkly, gives a nice full plump effect to the lips and I'm a huge fan, so. And then the final two, I have the Jaclyn Cosmetics Lip Oil and Honey Drip. Did we see that Jaclyn Cosmetics is closing its doors? I think this is overpriced for what it is. I probably shouldn't have purchased this. I did get them for like 40% off. I may still have one shade in my collection, but if I do, we'll get through it. And then the NARS Lip Oil in the shade Orgasm X. I like this formula, but I did not like this shade. But regardless, it is now an empty. And those are all 113 makeup empties. I'm so proud looking at this. Like it feels so good to like, I know I have a large makeup collection, but to still work so hard to empty out products and not let things just all sit and go to waste. So that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to watch and for supporting me and my channel as you guys always do. I would love to know what products you finished off this year. How many empties did you have? Let a girl know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting me and my channel as you guys always do. I love you guys so much and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.